What are you addicted to and why? Oh man, PK for life, baby. <laughs> Oh, what other hobbies or creative outlets do you have? That's such a good warm up one. I play the banjo and mandolin and trumpet and French horn, but mostly banjo. And I love to read. I roast coffee, which is a job, but also I think like a creative outlet and a hobby. And then for physical ones like jogging and climbing and hiking and stuff, outdoorsy things are always lovely. Oh, your greatest achievement outside of parkour. Oh man, that was depressing because I just realized my whole life is inside of parkour. <laughs> I have to go back to like age 12. Probably getting married. <laughs> but even that is arguably inside of parkour because I met Christine via parkour. Um, if I want to go completely outside of parkour, I'd say... My greatest achievement was being valedictorian of my graduating class in high school. That was probably the last time that I cared about other things as much as I cared about parkour. Favorite training shoes and why? Okay, it depends on if they're still accessible or not, but the all time favorites for me were the ASICs Corridos, which Dylan and I got at the same time. And we just love, I loved those training shoes. They're so good. Um, now I'm mostly wear the strike movement hazes, which are the Daryl edition, the red and black ones. And yeah, I haven't really like fallen in love with any shoes other than the strikes recently. So I feel like they, they're well-rounded. They do the trick for sure. Favorite parkour video and why? Oh, I'm getting the good nerdy ones. Um, I'm gonna go with a, a top three because I can't pick between these three. Long hair, big chief, because of its expression as what parkour is fundamentally. Uh, ooh, I was gonna say Blitzstem 5, but now I might say Callum's summer video because that is just like such a vibe. That and Store Summer both are like the same, just good community feels, and then uh, Oleg's Out of Time, because I think it was the most transformative video in parkour history. When that, from what parkour was pre that release to post that release is like, it was a different sport after that video. Do you think you have balance in your life? Surprisingly, yes, I, I do think I have balance. Um, although starting point A now feels like that balance may <laughs> completely crumble and have to be rebuilt. But yeah, I think I struggled to find balance for a long time between training and other things that I valued, family, friends. Uh, and when I started dating Christine, it was like the thing I needed. I needed something that I cared about as much as I cared about training and progression to create that balance and motivate me to explore life outside of this little bubble of our sport, uh, which I love. But yeah, I started being able to find more fulfillment in other places. And I think it's helped me lead a like much healthier, more balanced life. What are you addicted to and why? Oh man, PK for life, baby. <laughs> I honestly, I'm not that addictive of a person. I'm like the most boring human being, I think. I'm like, I sleep nine hours a night and just like the things that I do. And uh, yeah, I, I really do think probably that my biggest addiction is genuinely parkour, which is so nerdy to say, but um, even when I'm not training, like I don't go a day without thinking about it in some fashion. Um, and even if it's not like related to a project that I'm working on, it's just like, oh, um, I saw this really sick video on Instagram where I'll be like driving down the street and I'm just like picturing 
all of the challenges that even if I've already seen them and I'm still like, oh yeah, I have to go do that challenge. And just constantly like brain is being filled with ideas surrounding parkour. Um, so I feel like that is probably the most addictive thing in my life and has been for like 15 years. Number seven, what's your ideal day? Ooh, wow. All right, probably early bedtime the night before, like in bed at eight, read for like a little bit and then get like a really, really good sleep. Wake up at like 20 minutes before sunrise, read for like an hour while I make coffee and just have like really nice slow morning and watch the sunrise outside preferably. And then probably go out, do something active like a hike or like a little run, come home, make breakfast, go on a training session, maybe like just hang out with friends and have lunch in the afternoon. And then maybe like go for another walk in the evening and spend time with people that I love. And I think that's probably the ideal day and then be asleep again by like sunset. <laughs> like maybe have like a glass of wine with dinner and then knock out at 8.30 again. That's like immaculate. <laughs> where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I think where I'd like to see myself is still having the balance that I found now between the people that I care about and the things that I care about, um, being more financially stable, being more of a contributor to the culture of the sport that I love and continuing to kind of have a voice in that conversation and feel like I have a pulse on what's happening in the community. And I think in my personal life, like being a dad, and uh, having some like rad kids and taking them out to jams and yeah, just like doing that whole thing with my wife. I think that's like where I would like to be in 10 years time. It's like I, I can be like the cool dad at a parkour jam that maybe like is screening a project and still like progressing as much as I can, just doing some gnarly pole cats and like flip flops and maybe I can't do the biggest stuff, but yeah, still still pushing what I can and hanging out and like helping coach my kids through their first mental block in parkour or something. That's like, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Do you feel you have a purpose in life and why? Okay. I feel like everybody has a purpose and nobody has a purpose. It's like this self-created thing in the legitimately like existential sense of the word. I think, it's everyone's responsibility to find meaning in their own life and create purpose for themselves that has a deeper meaning than the surface. I think for me, that purpose is to maybe like bring stoke and compassion to as many people as I can and to use whatever voice I have to create space for other people to get opportunities that I've gotten to take advantage of. And I think also to continue to work on myself and work on the things that I want to improve. And yeah, I feel like that's the purpose is just to keep growing, to continue to redefine yourself as your life changes around you. And like that word balance, it's not like a static thing. If you do parkour, you know that like balance is constant, like fine adjustments. And I feel like that's like my purpose in life is redefining that balance and making those little adjustments as like my life changes around me. I just saw some of them, so I'm gonna do a quick shuffle. <laughs> what is your greatest achievement in parkour? I think my greatest achievement in parkour is doing it for 15 years and never falling out of love with the sport. I get really sad when people that I know and really care about and have enjoyed training with hit the point in their training career where they have to recontextualize how parkour fits into their life and they struggle to figure out who they are if they're not putting together the gnarliest show reel of the year. 
And I think I'm, I'm really lucky in that for me, parkour has always had so much intrinsic value that like, yeah, I, I have pushed myself and I've done movements that I'm proud of, but the, the value of the sport and the lessons that I've learned are not like, they're not because I did some cool challenge and I have challenges I still want to take off that would be the coolest things I've ever done. And like, I'm working toward those goals, but I think my, my greatest achievement is, um, yeah, just, just loving the things that I've done and, and being okay with being that like ultimate stoked nerd that still like looks at old videos and challenges. And it's just like, heck yeah, I love this sport so much. And I'm down to like go out in the forest and Naruto run like I did when I was 14. <laughs> and like, I don't, but like, I would be okay if that was my training also. And uh, yeah, it's just a good feeling to like feel that connected to something and have it like be that meaningful in your life.